Hello and welcome back. This demonstration video is about how to use the WISE management suite to upgrade the firmware on a WISE ThinOS client and also to upgrade and install software packages to the device. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off last video where we installed uh, the WISE management suite. So now we've got a new install of the WISE management suite. Go ahead and log in and you can see uh, the dashboard is fairly empty. Uh, we don't have any devices checked in, no groups and configs, um, etc. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go into the groups and config tab and under the default policy, we're going to leave that blank. We're not going to actually define any policy under that policy group, but we're going to hit the plus and we're going to add a new group below the default policy group. And I'm going to just call this one corp root. So normally what you're thinking about here is this might be the highest level in your organization where you're actually going to apply policy settings. Typically uh, the default policy group, I like to recommend you leave that blank. Um, so if you need to do any troubleshooting, you can always put uh, devices in there and they wouldn't get any policies applied. So now within the corp route is where we're actually going to begin to work. So uh, one of the things that I do as a uh, best practice or really just a learning is I usually set a specific wallpaper to my group that makes it very easy to determine when that device is in that group. So I've got a blue wallpaper here. I'm going to go ahead and edit it with paint and what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to actually write the word corp root in there just so it's very obvious so that when this is applied to my device they're in this corp root they'll get this blue background and it'll say corp root in the bottom right. So um, now that I've modified my uh, picture. I'll just save it into my pictures folder. Just call it corp root so I know what it is. Now it's uh, local on my device. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to go back into my WISE management suite server console and I go under apps and data and then in the bottom left under file repository I, I can go ahead and add file. And what I'm doing at this point is I'm actually just importing that wallpaper. So I'm going to import the corp root um, I select the type as a wallpaper and then I just give it some type of description uh, that is required. So okay, the blue wallpaper for corp root and then I go ahead and upload it. So now it's in my software repository. So now that it's there, I can go ahead and actually assign it uh, to a group. So I take that uh, policy, I edit for ThinOS and then I'm going to go into the visual experience and go ahead and configure this item. So I go ahead under the drop down, enable the wallpaper, and now that I've uploaded it to my software repository, I can select corp root from there. And then I'm going to go ahead and just change the desktop color to uh, all zeros or uh, black. Once I've made those two changes, I save and I go ahead and publish that. So now I've got a very generic uh, corp root policy. You can see with the wallpaper defined and a black background. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and download the latest firmware uh, for the device so I can go ahead and upgrade it. So if I just go to uh, support.dell.com and then I uh, select thin clients and then I'm going to select wise hardware and then wise 3040 because I'm actually working for working with a wise 3040 in this case and I'm using the thin OS version that supports PCIP so I'll select the operating system and then the category uh, I'm going to just do operating system. So now I'm going to just get firmware files. So the one I'm looking for is the latest. It's the top of the list. I'm going to get the raw file for 8.6.024 and I'll just go ahead and save that uh, onto my local system. Once that's saved, I'm going to need to do the same thing like I did with the wallpaper file and actually upload it and make it available to my software repository. So this shouldn't take long to download and once it's downloaded I do need to extract it so I find that file and then the actual uh, raw firmware file is going to uh, be familiar it's going to be a WNOS file or a PA10Q WNOS so that's specific for the WISE 3040 um, so now I can go into my uh, software repository, click on add and browse to that and find that same file, that PA10Q and then as well give it a description 
and go ahead and upload that. So now under apps and data, under OS image repository, under ThinOS, you can see a firmware file. Let's go back while we're here and let's go ahead and download a couple package files. So I've changed the view. So the first one I'm going to download is the Horizon package. Um, so I'll go ahead and download and save that. This is really the file to give it the latest uh, Horizon View client on the device. And then I'm also going to do the JVDI software package. And let's do the RTME package. as well. So now I've got three software packages downloaded onto my system. So like I did before, I can go back into my WISE Management Suite console under Apps and Data. As soon as that's done, okay, the files are downloaded. Okay. JVDI under apps and data so now I'm going to add a package file and go ahead and browse to that location although actually it did download them as uh, self-extracting zips so let me go ahead and expand them first so I need to go to my downloads and find the okay there's the RTME and I'm just going to copy that and I'll put it right on my desktop so there's actually the file with the PKG extension that's what I'm looking for as far as a package file so do that with the horizon one put that out onto my desktop so we've got the RTME the horizon so I just need to go we'll get the JVDI and get this one and copy it and place it on my desktop. So now back in the console, now I can continue the upload. So select the horizon and go ahead and give it a some notes or a description. Let's call this the horizon view package. Let's go add a package file, add the JVDI package, upload, and then finally the RTME package. So now I've uploaded the new firmware file, RTME package. Um, and three separate package files for WISE ThinOS. Okay, there, RTME is all right. So now they see the three packages are there. RTME package one more time. I don't know that took. Okay, there they are. So all three of the packages plus the firmware file uh, are available in my software repository. So now if I go into groups and configs and under corp root, if I click on the right where it says edit policies and select thin OS, I can scroll down and I see a firmware upgrade tab and under the platform type I can select from the drop down now I'm only using a wise 3040 with PCIP that's all that I have so that's the only drop down of course if you have different systems they'll show up there and likewise I've only got one version of firmware the 86024 available so I'm going to go ahead and say that any device in this group would do that and then I'm also selecting all three of the package files and save and publish so now this policy is applied to the corp root group 
this policy that will upgrade the firmware and apply these three packages. So here is my device. Uh, again, this has been reset to defaults. I'm going to go ahead and go to the wizard, select the language, the keyboard layout, go ahead and select the time zone. Um, you've probably seen me do this before if you set the video, if you saw some of the previous videos. And there is Eastern Time. Click on Next. And now this time I'm actually going to specify that I am using a Wise Management Suite server. So what I want to do in here, I'm going to put the default group. Remember there was a default group that didn't have any settings that would apply to it. So that is DEFA. And actually let me show you where that set, uh, setting is. If I go back into the, the group key, you can see under the default policy group with a little key symbol, there's a group called DEFA dash DEFA DEFA. And that's actually the default. That's what you will have too if you've done a uh, WMS standard on-prem. Your group, that's in, and you don't rename it. And then right here, what was previously there was the URL for the Wise Management Suite cloud version. Uh, you could leave that if you're using the cloud version. If you're on-prem, then you just need to put the name of the server that you installed Wise Management Suite on. So this one, if you watch the earlier videos, you remember we did it on demo2-wms.bplab.local. I'm going to disable any SSL warnings and go ahead and click on Next and Done. I don't need to set any other settings because now all my settings are going to come to the device from the Wise Management Suite server. So if you remember, they're in this... Uh, default group and I told you the default group let's not make any changes but you can see the group registration key is there and the WMS server is there successful so the device should be now communicating with my wise management suite server and you can see current device is on 86013 so 013 and you can see the versions of the packages and you'll notice for example there is no JVDI and the Horizon and the RTME packages are actually uh, lower versions than ones that we downloaded. So at this point, uh, if I click on devices, okay, there is my device. I can see it checked in one minute ago. I can also see on the screen here the OS version is the 83013. So I'm going to go ahead and change the group. So it's in the default group. I'm changing it to the corp root group. So I can do that from here. And let's just go ahead and flip back to the console or to the device. So it may take it just a few seconds. It should come up here shortly. And it should reach out the, the Wise Management Suite server and let the device know that its group has changed. Okay, there it is. It's actually started to, to push down uh, some of the firmware file. And it'll go ahead and restart the system and finish up the configuration. I'm going to let the, the video run here so you can just get an idea how long this would take. Um, there's a few things that need to happen because remember we are upgrading uh, a firmware file which in this case I think is about 40 megs and then there's uh, three different packages files so we're updating the Citrix RTME extensions, we're doing the Horizon package and we're also up, or adding the JVDI package. So all of those things need to happen but still um, it should be pretty quick. Um, on the system. We also, because we put it in the corp root in just a moment, when it finishes, if it gets everything correctly, it should get the sp specific wallpaper that we've assigned to the corp root um, domain or policy, the group. The policy is the policy is assigned to the group, right? So if you think about it, you're creating policies kind of like group policies and you're assigning them to groups and then devices are assigned to the groups and they'll get all the policy settings. As you can see it's extracting the, the JVDI package at this point. And I see it had already done the Horizon package, did the JVDI, and this should be the last package, the RTME package. Okay, and as you can see, uh, it did get the blue wallpaper with the Corp root logo, 
um, the visual experience one of the other things when we turned on the visual experience it went from the what's called the classic mode to the VDI mode so it's just notifying us that it needs to reboot to apply those visual settings so it's contacted the the wise management suite server and it's got the background and it's upgraded the firmware and put the three packages that we applied to this group so let's go ahead and just click on system information and let's confirm there it is 86024 remember we were at 86013 uh, before so this device had shipped from the factory with 13 we've upgraded it with the raw file to 214 if you look under system tools and packages you can see the updated packages and also the addition of the JVDI package to the device and in the on the devices view uh, we can say see that same information it's reflected here um, in more details here we can see the OS version that is applied so hopefully this video was helpful to you um, on how to use the wise management suite to upgrade the firmware of a wise 10 OS client and also how to install and upgrade packages thank you and have a good day